We'll begin with the report that the Federal Capital Territory High Court, sitting in the Airport area of Abuja, has ordered the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the Department of State Services and other security agencies to arrest the former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Jiziani Alison Madweke, within 72 hours. Justice Valentine Ashi made the order following an ex parte application made before the court by the counsel to the EFCC, Mr. Nsor Denga. Mr. Denga asked the court to issue a warrant of arrest against Madrike to enable the commission apprehend and arraign her for alleged financial crimes in Nigeria. Mrs. Madrike is to be arraigned on February the 25th alongside the man described as her partner, Mr. Gideon Mokore, following a petition made against both of them. The former minister, Mr. Mokore, was said to have engaged in illicit and fraudulent dealings in oil transactions. I think it's uh, fair to... The acting chairman of the uh, EFCC, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, has been speaking about the issue. He said the EFCC has asked the UK to extradite the former petroleum minister and other Nigerians who are hiding in the country after looting the Commonwealth. We are already in court. We have obtained a warrant of arrest. We are making effort to place her on the red notice at the Interpol label. And we, are, we, have had, we had a meeting with the UK authority over her extradition. We are also demanding for the extradition of other Nigerians who are hiding there. In Plateau State, Justice Daniel Longi of the State High Court has reserved ruling till the 13th of December on the admissibility of the bank document tendered by the EFCC against former State Governor Jonah Jang and Yusuf Giang Pam, a cashier with the State Government. The bank document tendered by the prosecution is said to be crucial to the trial of the accused persons. The former governor, currently the senator representing Plateau North at the National Assembly and the former cashier are charged with an alleged misappropriation of state funds to the tune of 6.3 billion naira. Like I always say, they are engaged in media trial. For example, if you look at today's newspapers, you will see where they are saying that they traced the property worth 500 million naira to him. There's nothing like that. They are saying by their own evaluation. There's nothing like that. There's nothing in the, in the charges here that relates to that at all. So it is just to embarrass the former governor, David Jonah Jang, by putting his case in the public domain even when we are already here. And you cannot tell a person that you are prosecuting by yourself using your own counsel to again report to your office on the same day that your matter, which you are prosecuting, which you personally fix through your counsel, is coming up. So I personally wrote on behalf of my government chambers to the FCC to say, Jonah Jan cannot honor that invitation. In Lagos, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has rearranged alleged fraudster Fred Ajudwa on a 10-count charge of defrauding a German, Zaid Abduzalaf, of the sum of $1 million. At the Special Offenses Court sitting in Ikeja, Mr. Ajudwa pleaded not guilty to the charges, which also include conspiracy, obtaining by false pretenses and forging of documents. Presiding Justice Mojisala Dada also dismissed an application brought by Ajudua's counsel, Mr. Olale Ojo, asking the court to recuse itself from the case on grounds of likelihood of bias. The judge held that the three petitions written by the defendant on the issue in the past had exonerated her as she had been given a clean bill of health by the Chief Justice of Nigeria and the National Judicial Council, NJC. The court subsequently took the testimony of the German on how he was allegedly defrauded by the defendant. Another judge of the same court has fixed January 6, 2019 for the continued trial of suspected kidnap kingpin Chikudumeme Onwamadike, popularly known as Evans. At the last sitting of the court on Wednesday, December 6, Justice Olua Tony Taiwo heard how the defendant allegedly shot at the chairman of the Young Shall Grow Motors, Obianuju Vincent, in an attempt to kidnap him. A police officer attached to the Inspector General of Police Intelligence Response Team, Ido Haruno, told Justice Taiwo that in the process, two persons were killed. 
Evans is standing trial with Joseph Ikenna Emeka, Chiemeka Arinze and Udeme Frank Ukmong on seven counts of murder, attempted murder, conspiracy to kidnap and selling of firearms. The incident was said to have occurred on August 27, 2013 in Festered Town, Lagos. And we round up in Port Harcourt, the River State capital, where the High Court has issued two bench warrants on the Director General of the 20 year Coal Campaign, Chidi Lloyd, and directed the Commissioner of Police in the state to arrest, detain and produce the former Majority Leader in court at the next sitting. Justice Chingwendu Nwogu, who issued the bench warrant, adjourned the matter to the 10th of January 2019, following the absence of Lloyd and his lawyers in court. Mr. Lloyd is expected to take his plea on the next adjourned date. He is facing charges of attempted murder and for inflicting grievous bodily harm. In another case before the same High Court, proceedings in the murder charge brought by the state government against the chairman of the APC in the state, Ojukai Flaga Makri, has also been adjourned till January 24, 2019, following the absence of the defendant. <laughs> And that's the program this week. Please feel free to send in your comments, questions, or suggestions. Also remember that you can find these and past episodes of the program on our YouTube page. I am Shola Sheely. Thank you for watching.